Can an overclocked Skylake i3 keep up with a stock Haswell i5? Let's find out. Even though Intel has already gone on the offensive and began having motherboard manufacturers release updated BIOSes to disable base clock overclocking on non skew CPUs, we wanted to take a quick look at how the i3-6100 when overclocked to around 4.5GHz would compare to the previous generation i5 as well the i5-4690. So let's let take a quick look at the setups that we're going to be using. The Haswell setup is going to be using a Z87 ROG Hero board from ASUS with 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance RAM at 1600 MHz and we're going to be pairing up the R9 Nano with this setup. In contrast, we'll be using the MSI Z170 X Power Gaming along with 16 gigabytes of Trident Z DDR4 at 3200 MHz and the same R9 Nano for the Skylake setup. Let's jump right into it and see what kind of differences that we get in the gaming performance. Now, Dirt Rally is first up, and we use the in-game benchmark at 1080p with the Ultra preset and no MSAA. Now, that gave us a minimum of 100 with the i3 and 92 with the i5, but an average of 130 with the i3 and 118.5 with the i5, showing that Dirt Rally prefers the speed, the single core speed. Now, Metro Last Light tells a different story. With both CPUs having roughly the same minimum of around 23 FPS, the averages are quite a bit different. The i3 shows 83 FPS at uh, you know 1080p, and then the i5 pulls out 95.3 average FPS, which is substantially higher. I don't care who, how you slice that. Now, GTA 5, again, we see very similar minimums with uh, 47.3 on the i3, 47 on the i5. However, the averages are 86.2 for the i3 and 94 for the i5. And if you're curious about the settings, that game was run at pretty much high settings all the way down and 2x MSAA. Now, Star Wars Battlefront was run at 1080p with the Ultra preset. Now, there's a bit of a story to tell here with the i3 showing a minimum of 73 and the i5 pulling out 108 FPS on the minimum. The average is not such a big difference. We're looking at 121.5 on the i3 and 129 on the i5. However, that minimum is going to make a big difference in the way the game plays and feels. And last but not least, we're going to take a quick look at Rise of the Tomb Raider. Now the i3 uh, overclocked has a higher minimum than the i5-4690 with you know a 6 FPS difference, not a huge difference. However, interesting to note here, they both have the exact same average FPS. Now this bench was run from the beginning of the game up through the first 5 or so minutes and run on the high preset at 1080p. So that's kind of what you get there. Now it's kind of a mixed bag what you get. Um, for the most part, the i3 puts up a very good fight against the much more expensive i5 that's also a true quad core, whereas the i3 is only a dual core with hyper threading. So if you're into the games that kind of benefit from the single perf, uh, you may be better off with the i3 because you're, you know, it's, well, single core, it's just going to be faster. But if you need multi-core performance and you're using it for productivity use, the i5 may be your better option, even if you don't get an unlock skew and you just leave it at its stock clock. Well, there's a lot more to, to this story over on the website. If you click the link in the description below, you'll see the full article where we compare the i3 to itself and then to the i5. We also take a look at some uh, productivity benchmarks and kind of go over it all there. So join us over at WCCFTech.com and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you.